Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're gonna cut like a razor blade with Set and Matt. Okay, so today we're gonna look at the Set and Matt effect. And it can be pretty useful if you don't want your comps littered with like 15 track mats. For example, over here we have this front piece, this back piece, and this right piece all matted out by the same layer. But this is just a simple example. You can use this in far more complex ways. So let's take a look at it real quick. It's just a simple setup. This cut line isn't matted out at all, but you can see we have a line here for it. It slices down and then it moves down in the same direction. And this front shape is parented to it. The mat is down here in the bottom and it's actually off. I made it out of a shape because sometimes there can be some weird things when layer sizes mismatch, but I haven't really had an issue when the mat was a shape. And then you also have the added benefit of not having a solids folder with extra stuff cluttering up your project. So if you notice, the mat has some position keyframes. Because if you cut it, the set mat effect still sees it. So you actually have to move its position out of the way if you don't want it to show. In this case, you can see the line where the two pieces join. So for one frame, I pop it away. I should have used hold keyframes, but you can do whatever you want. But you can see here, if we move this, you can actually get it to go between. So you can animate these shapes and actually have them reveal layers. I just did that in a spot actually where two things slice through. Each one wipes to either side, leaving strokes behind for the text, and then those animate out too. So you can do a lot with this. So we have that front layer and then we have the bones layer and that's actually animated so that the text draws back on. All right, so let's go back to the main comp. So this slices away and we're just left with the other piece. So how do you set this up? It's pretty easy. You throw the set matte effect on and then you pick your matte layer. And in this case, we're gonna use alpha channel but you actually have a whole bunch of different selections you can use too. So if you wanted to use a grayscale image or something like that, you can use that to determine your alpha. So the second piece is actually the same thing. It's selecting the same matte and the only difference is that the matte is inverted. So then we have both sides. The bones have the same mat. It's also inverted. They just don't move so that they're always there. And that's how you use that effect to save you two extra track mats. With the added bonus that with that single mat layer, you only have to update the animation once. You can just build one, change it, see how it goes. And that's it for this week. Hopefully it's something you haven't seen before that actually will help you save some time by not having to dig through a bunch of layers. And if you've been watching, you know that's one of my favorite things. All right, guys, as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you feel like helping to support what I do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. I am Joe, and I will see you guys next week. Go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. That's three vanilla ice references. <laughs> Bye.